Well, and speaking of surviving, let's sort of get to the big picture now. From what I can understand, you've had something like 15,000 people now that have come through your centre mm. and that you've your programs, you've actually had 75,000 people that have been involved in your programs in one way or another. Would that be mm. correct? Yeah, probably a bit more, in fact. Okay. <laughs> yes, there's, there's I'm checking people. your website. <laughs> yeah, yes. um, when people are now diagnosed you know, with cancer, and obviously it depends on what part of the body and all the rest of it, but now in 2007, compared to when you were first diagnosed, what, how much greater is the success rate now of healing oneself from cancer with all that we know? Well, he healing is oneself, a, a I think... Is there a percentage we can... Yeah, we've got to put it into a context, I mm -hmm. think, Robin, that um, um, the actual... Uh, unfortunately, I have to use the word in a sense, but the actual gross sort of uh, figures, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of when you look at the the medically available or the statistically available figures. Um, the, the, the survival of cancer from cancer has gone up slowly. It's, it's really quite small over those years, taken overall. Okay. Um, what, what is helpful is to differentiate between statistics and individuals, mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And also to consider, well, how many people are doing the sorts of things that we're talking about. So. Um, it, it probably is useful to talk about what's on offer, I guess, in through what we're doing and how it relates to conventional medicine. Okay, well, let's just, just to get a couple of facts in there that do make sense, was it three or four times a week, if a woman exercises three to four times a week, she can reduce the breast cancer by 50%? What were those stats? Um, there's a big research came out in the Journal of the American Medical Association uh, last year, I think it is, uh, mm -hmm. the 06, yeah. And it showed that for women with primary breast cancer, if they exercise half an hour a day, mm -hmm. regularly, mm -hmm. then they reduce their risk of dying of the disease by 50%. Which is huge. It's huge. And okay, prostate cancer. Um, what was the stats same sort that? of amount of exercise reduces the risk of dying by 70%. Yeah. And pr uh, primary bowel cancer, stage two or three, same amount of exercise reduces the risk of dying uh, by 50% again. Okay, so that's the good news. Yeah. So why isn't the good news being out there going... <laughs> Well, it depends what view you take. I mean, uh, I think if, if there was a drug mm -hmm. that came onto the market that showed that potential, and there isn't one, mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt it would be on the front of every newspaper. It would All the TV stations would be running it, mm -hmm. and there'd be a huge marketing push that would get it out there. And if you look at uh, primary breast cancer, uh, many women are given um, chemotherapy for that situation. If you look at the evidence, and uh, there was a major study uh, conducted by a group of oncologists in Sydney uh, a couple of years ago that did this, and they did a very meticulous analysis of the statistics around the use of chemotherapy, and they showed that the um, five-year survival benefit for women with primary breast cancer through having chemotherapy was about 3.5%. So it's really quite a small amount. Um, they, they, they think, because we haven't had enough time to really follow it through, that some of the more modern treatments that have been introduced to, for chemotherapy for primary breast cancer may well have been improved at another percent to bring it up to 4.5. Um, but that's at the cost of much more um, significant side effects. And so you trade that off and you think, well, it's, it's, it's actually quite precarious, actually. So, in other words, the results really aren't there as much as, because we're not saying don't do this. Well, one of the things too with statistics is you've got to recognise that when I say 3.5%, that's yeah. an absolute figure. So yeah. if people are really trying to understand this, they have to work out the difference between absolute and relative. So the, a woman with primary breast cancer has got an 85% chance of surviving just following initial surgical treatment. Mm -hmm. Chemotherapy can improve that by 3.5%. Exercise half an hour a day reduces the risk of dying by 50%. The risk of dying is 15%. So the, the, the absolute benefit of the exercise is 7.5%. So it's mm -hmm. over twice as much as the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we're rapidly getting to the stage where women who are recommended to have chemotherapy and aren't advised to exercise would actually have quite a powerful legal case. Really? Well... 
if there was a drug that could increase your chances yeah, of surviving yeah. by 7.5% and it was twice as good as the drug of the day that was being recommended, there'd be a negligence issue. And one of the things that's remarkable about this is that it's because it's exercise, people think, oh, well, it'd be nice to know about that, but what the heck sort of thing. Well, what the heck? It's like there's a huge benefit in helping women to exercise and, and helping anybody probably with cancer to exercise. And, you know, the way our hospital structures are set up, they're set up to support people who are going through chemotherapy. They're not actually set up to support people to exercise. Okay, now, the evidence that's there at the moment is really clear that there needs to be a balance in that. And the chemotherapy may well make sense. I don't want to sound no. like I'm anti that. Yeah. But I think there are, there are going to be plenty of women who look at those figures and say, well, I'm not sure that the cost of the chemotherapy is worth the benefit. When, what we find through our groups is that when women make that choice, they get a lot of difficulty because their friends say you're mad. Mm. The medicos often put a lot of pressure on them, whereas if they go along with the chemotherapy, it becomes glamorised. You know, people think, oh, it's, you know, it's wonderful, she's doing the noble thing, you know, she's so... You know, uh, and that may well be true, but it's not balanced by the fact that, 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 that for quite a significant number of people, it's actually a rational choice to say, I've thought this through really clearly, looked at the evidence, and it actually doesn't make sense. It makes more sense to look after myself in ways that where, like exercise, where the side effects of exercise are. We know it's great for treating depression, which a lot of people with cancer can develop. Mm -hmm. We know it's good for your state of mind generally. We know it's good for everything else to do with your health. There's very few downsides to exercising. And some people will say, well, to me, that's a better deal. Yeah, absolutely. We need to take another break. When we come back, I'd like to ask some more practical <coughs> questions around cancer and diagnosis. Stay with us. <laughs> 